Formula One only needed one day back on track in 2020 before its first controversy kicked off as Red Bull protested Mercedes' innovative steering system, the DAS. But after careful consideration on Friday evening at the Red Bull Ring, the Austrian Grand Prix stewards ruled that Mercedes' dual-axis steering system is legal. It's an issue that can be traced all the way back to the debut of the DAS in pre-season, more than four months ago, but Red Bull needed to see the system in action on a Grand Prix weekend to pull the trigger on a protest. So what was its case, how did Mercedes defend its ingenious system, and what was ultimately behind the stewards' decision to turn Red Bull away? Before we dive into answering, remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the notifications button to stay up to date on all the major F1 stories like this one. Now, here's everything you need to know about the first big controversy of F1 2020. Red Bull said the DAS is, quote, an unnecessary separate system requiring a separate driver input and using components which are separate in their effect to the main steering system. It protested it on the basis of two sections of the FIA technical regulations. The first, Article 3.8, covers what is called aerodynamic influence, and this article is commonly referred to as banning movable aerodynamic devices. But Red Bull majored on the part that outlaws any car system, device or procedure which uses driver movement as a means of altering the aerodynamic characteristics of the car. Meanwhile, the second article it quoted simply states that no adjustment may be made to any suspension system while the car is in motion. Red Bull also referenced the so-called primary purpose principle, whereby a design can be considered against the regulations if it exists to serve a different objective to its ostensible purpose. A conventional Formula 1 steering system is exempt from the above articles as applying and removing steering lock fundamentally impacts the aerodynamics and the suspension of the car. But the crux of Red Bull's case was to argue that the DAS is not part of the conventional steering system. It claimed that because the DAS is incapable of lap navigation in isolation, it is a separate and redundant system to the steering. Red Bull argued that video footage of the Mercedes from Austria proved the DAS plays no part in changing the trajectory of the car. It also stated that the video footage showed it was used on in-laps, out-laps and recharge laps, but not timed laps, and therefore its primary purpose is not steering, but tyre management. So if the DAS isn't a steering system, then it's a suspension system and it can't be changed on track. Mercedes argued the DAS is part of the steering system and not the suspension. While a conventional steering system moves the wheels in the same direction, the DAS moves the front wheels in opposite direction to each other, which Mercedes says is like changing the static toe angle of the steering system. It also pointed out that conventional steering changes the toe as the steering angle changes. And furthermore, Mercedes said that changing the toe angle impacts the force applied to the front tyres and any driver knows that changing the toe makes the car change its steer response. Therefore, changing the toe does steer the car. It described DAS as a system that allows a driver to optimise the toe and change the steering response while on a run rather than only being able to do it in the pits. Mercedes contended that as DAS is part of the steering, it is legal because it allows for the alignment of two wheels, is not electronically controlled and passes the geometrical and safety requirements of the regulations. And Mercedes therefore asserted it benefits from the same implicit exemptions from the articles Red Bull quoted as every conventional steering system on the grid. The stewards said DAS would be illegal if it were not part of the steering. Crucially, it ruled in Mercedes' favour. The stewards said Mercedes' steering wheel has two degrees of freedom and the DAS is part of that. The steering wheel adjusts the wheels conventionally when it rotates and adjusts the toe when it is moved back and forth. The rules stipulate that at least two wheels are used for steering and the realignment of more than two wheels is outlawed. However, the 2020 rules do not state that a steering wheel can only operate on one axis and the front wheels can also move relative to one another. In the steward's view, the aim of the steering system is to change the direction of the car and the front wheels change direction to achieve that. They said that changing the toe does alter the trajectory of the car and therefore the input of the DAS has a direct steering effect and the DAS is fully under the control of the driver and physically integrated within the car's conventional steering system. And this was key for the stewards, who said, the fact it acts on the track rod is, we believe, entirely equivalent to the conventional steering. The stewards said the DAS could legitimately be considered part of the car's steering system and hence should be subjected to the same implicit and explicit regulations as a conventional system. 
The stewards therefore ruled there was no basis to Red Bull's protest. Steering fundamentally changes the aerodynamic performance and suspension behaviour of the car, and the DAS being part of that means it benefits from all of the dispensations required to make it legal. And while the alignment of the wheels does affect the suspension, this is considered incidental. As the regulations separate the function of the suspension and the steering, the stewards ruling means the DAS cannot be part of the suspension as well. This dismissed the second of Red Bull's arguments and put Mercedes in the clear. So that's the full story of Red Bull's failed Mercedes protest. Are you pleased the FAA came down on the side of innovation or do you think Red Bull was in the right? Let us know in the comments below, give this video a like and if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the biggest F1 issues like this.